This is Jets FM on the OF fan as the Jets lose in Buffalo week one of the 2020 season underway. Jan Levine joining me from rotowire.com. And uh, Jan, we're going to start this uh, recap with a, uh, a less than two minute uh I'm not going to say excuses. Uh, two minutes uh, where we're going to have some uh, positivity or some let's not get too crazy. And then 98% of the rest of the show, uh, we're going to be in full criticizing mode. But what I want to okay. get over the get, get, get in here is, and I talked about this on, on the Buffalo show last week, is that don't forget, this is Buffalo, even though there's no fans. Teams can go into Buffalo week one. We've seen the Super Bowl champs do it in New England years ago. Lost, got shut out 38-0, won the Super Bowl. Uh, first few weeks of the season even, these things happen uh, early on. There's a matchup situation that's obviously not good for the Jets with Josh Allen. Uh, you throw in the fact that Jets offensive line, first time together against one of the better defenses in the NFL. So, so there's a lot of things that I think people need to fans need to just relax. It's one week. Even the best of teams get off to bad starts like this. Okay, that's it. Now, can I, can I give you my? Yes, one you can. Go ahead. Because go ahead. Do I, it. I literally have only one positive thing from this entire game. Okay. Jamison Crowder has more speed than I thought he did. Okay. Very that's good. That's about it. The rest of it. Nope. Sorry. And Not buying it. It, it starts off, of course. You knew there was a bad sign when the opening kickoff started off with a penalty. And we had to start the ball at the 10-yard line, which, by the way, the average drive start uh, comparison was 38-22. Can't do that in Buffalo and expect to win. It's just not going to happen. Okay, so everything that happened early on in the game until Darnold threw that pass to Le'Veon Bell, that, that only pass to Le'Veon Bell, that, that gained for 30 yards in the fir- late in the first half. Everything before that from Sam Darnold was crap. Sam Darnold looked like, like he hasn't learned anything. That's uh, what I he, tweeted. He, he looked, looked like absolutely a- terrible. I agree. Like a first-year quarterback who didn't know what he was doing. I am sick of him throwing off the back of his foot. Uh... I get reminded, too, in these NFL games, I haven't talked about it all preseason because we had no preseason games. Usually I get the reminder of how bad analysts are on TV, and I like to joke about them, especially the preseason analysts because they're not full-time analysts and they're really bad. But I had no games. So finally, the first game, I'm starting to listen, and I'm like, you know, James Lofton, you're you're just a freaking idiot. All right, shut your face because you don't know what the frick you're talking about. All right, I mean, so many things. He was making excuses all day long for Sam Darnold. He's just an idiot. Uh, I'd get that out of the way. But Sam Darnold was just so bad. And like I said, the back of the of uh, and oh, and one of the things that Lofton did was talk about how Darnold was feeling the pressure, and that's why his passes were off, kind of thing. You know, considering these guys haven't been together for a while, and it's the first game against the best team in the NFL, I thought the offensive line did fine. I have no uh-huh. problem with the offensive line. It wasn't their fault. Did they give up pressure? Yeah, they gave up some pressure. They're supposed to give up pressure. That's a great defensive team they're facing. But Sam Darnold had time to throw in the pocket, and when he had time to throw, nothing. When he moved around to the pocket and threw the ball, nothing. He came up with nothing. And the offensive line gave him more than enough opportunities in this game. It was all Sam Darnold's fault in the, as far as I was concerned with this offense. So I knew we were in trouble. Beyond just penalty, first drive, well, quote unquote, first drive. You can really didn't drive at all. Crowder out route wide open. Yep. First down. Third and seven. Completely missed him. Excellent. Good protection. Close. No problem. Yep. Right on the money, and Jamison Crowder drops the ball. But also, he had him on the out route wide open. And he, oh, and he, yep, and he threw the threw the ball like like a rookie. I don't know. He's wh- like, where are you throwing? How can you at? not complete that pass right now? Then, then later on, you had the um, you had the one where he got late pressure, took forever to throw the ball. Pick. Here's my here's my question. Oh, you mean you mean the one when he 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 scrambled to his left oh, and not threw to his right? Pass toss. The other one that was a pretty horrific throw that he made. Also, I can't keep up with them. 
So I don't it know. It was a horrible throw. It was an absolutely horrible throw. I don't know what he was doing. Um, he only had one pick. Sorry. So this is one where he had the guy wide open and he just underthrew him. And then he took forever to throw the ball. And over. And look, the offensive line was okay. It wasn't great. Yeah, it wasn't but their here's fault. The point we've talked about it. Josh Allen, two really bad fumbles. But he made things happen with his legs. Yep. Whatever yep. happened to the Sam Darnold that made things happen with his legs? Yep. Oh, yeah. Josh Allen Year was one, 10 times better than Sam Darnold. He would use his legs and gain yardage. Last two years with the new offense, he's like afraid to. Even today, there were times he could have run. There were times he went out of the pocket and could have just thrown the ball away. But no. He oh, didn't. yeah. I like the one where he gave up five yards on the sack when all he had to do was throw the just ball throw away. It. Yeah. Just throw it out of bounds. Right yeah. Inside the pocket. That what was a good doing? one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's then, it's just it uh, you know uh, offensive uh, ineptitude, defensive ineptitude in my opinion. No containment on Allen. No gap control. Yeah, I don't know. You have a month you're, you're, or two our, months to prepare for Josh Allen, and Greg Williams can't find a spy. He can't spy the guy, knowing how Josh Allen is so important. With his ability to run the ball is just as, if not more important, than him actually throwing the football. And we had nobody basically spying him. I didn't see nope. a spy. Nope, there was none. I thought, I don't think, I, I, if you please wait, if you can find me somebody on the defense who had a really good game, please tell me. I don't think May had a great game. I, don't, I think Desir was horrible. Um, I, I just penalties at bad times, guys wide open, digs open, Brown open. Um, Moss and Singletary didn't have great games, but they were able to gain yards. I mean, Quinton Williams with a, with a roughing the passer penalty. Now how about oh. how about pool holds on third and goal? Yep. Okay. How about the next play? Well, the next play, they actually allow Josh Allen to bootleg for a touchdown. And he's white. I mean, how do you not? I mean, Jenkins. I don't know if it was his man. It looked like it could have been, but he was more he was more worried about number seventy one offensive lineman than Josh Allen running wide open to the to, to, to this corner of the end zone. That's what Jenkins was more. That was his focus. No, I can see Allen. I'm going to take this guy, even though nobody's over here. So, uh, and then how about Quinnen Williams on third down, jumping off sides? Yep. First down. Uh, as, as I said. I, I, He's another I, one, Quinnen Williams. Very, very few redeeming qualities in, in this game at all. I mean, you know, Herndon, look. The, Herndon, the fumble. fumble, just what we had, all the momentum. 21-10. Yep. We have the ball. We could actually get into this game even more. And Chris Herndon fumbles the football. Yep. Agreed. I don't I'm I'm at a loss. Um look, you can argue whether he had possession or net possession. The fact is they didn't go to him that often except for the last drive when they made the the window dressing touchdown to make it 27-17. You can argue that the Oh yeah, the, don't the care about that drive. Talent, the wide receiver talent was lacking. You know, Le'Veon got hurt with his hamstring. He missed most of the game. Um, you didn't see much out of Gore. Josh Adams got some chances late. He got the late touchdown. Again, the window dressing touchdown. I'm. It's kind of hard to have any sense of positivity as a Jet fan right now, given what we saw in this game. Now, look, they don't play well in Buffalo. We know that. Well, that's what I'm you saying. Weeks, I mean, but that's, you know. You had, you had weeks to prepare sure. for this game. Weeks to prepare for this game. And you still came out and laid a complete egg in this game. I mean, if, score, they just... if, Adam, if he doesn't fumble... That score is is way worse than twenty seven seventeen. Yeah, but if you, and if you think about it though, again, if you don't do and make stupid mistakes, and your quarterback plays the way we're expecting him to, I don't know how this game turns out. But it's, immediately from the very beginning of the game, everything went wrong between stupid plays, Darnold looking like crap, and just like that. They get behind two scores and they can never catch up. So, you know, again, I'm I am hoping it's one week. It could happen to the best of them, but Joe Douglas and and this is his responsibility to make sure that Sam Darnold has enough weapons. Now he brings in Hogan. He doesn't re-sign Thomas or go out and get another receiver. He he's they're counting on Mims. So, okay, this is what you're counting on. You've got Smith hurt. So I, I can't get an excuse. 
that Darnold doesn't have enough weapons when, hey, D- Douglas and Gase believe that he does. Well, we let so, one, we let one of those weapons go, as you know, and I, you know, my view on this one. No, but it was one for one. So you know, no, it's no. Like, wait, wait, hold on. You and I discussed this though. The given that given what he's making salary wise, given the cap room that exists, and given what we need in the future, you could have had both. Nothing well, precluded. But you from I, I don't both, know. Especially, but, but, but then why did he sign Perryman? But then why did he sign Perryman right after he let Anderson go? Uh, because he lost the wide receiver and he had to pivot and sign somebody. No, that's what I'm saying. Look, he had no well, objective. Is, is, Greg, no, I'm agreeing with you. He didn't want – this isn't well, about then, one for one because I'm trying to tell you Douglas didn't want both of them. Then, well, you know what? Right now, our offense looks like a like a sieve and a pop gun again. Hey, well, again, that's, that's what I'm saying. So that's not – that's why that's – if, if they believe now, look, maybe Mims is healthy next week. He's, nope. they're, they're talking about how he, great he looks. And this is what we also talked about heading into th- to this game. We were sick and tired of hearing all of the great things about Sam Darnold. And this is why we were sick and tired of it. Sick and tired of hearing how, and Joe Douglas and everybody, oh, he looks so, we're so excited because he's not thinking anymore. He's getting the ball out real fast. He's not, he knows this offense now. We're really excited. And then he starts out like this. Well, you want, you think it's Where's getting the ball out quickly going to do for you if you can't hit a guy? If Daniel Jones has a big game tomorrow to get against the Steelers, and especially the Giants win, just wait. The New York papers will have a field day in the comparison of Daniel Jones wow. and Sam Darnold. I'm glad I don't live in New York then. I'm telling so, you right now, you're going to see it all over the place. And you know what? I don't blame them. First of all, it sells newspapers. And secondly, it's going to be kind of hard not to sell that narrative. Of course. Again, Sam Darnold doesn't deserve an, any protection at all. I mean, nope. if anything, it is time before time runs out to start treating Sam Darnold with stop, stop treating him with kid gloves. So, and, and maybe, maybe it'll happen behind the scenes and maybe they'll talk, uh, you know, in the media, like everything's fine. We love Sam, but I certainly hope behind closed doors, when they look at the film that they get into Sam, that they lay it into him, that he's got to be better. Cause if not, then you know what, then if you don't do it that way, Adam, then you lose your job. And then Sam Darnold and, doesn't get re-signed. And then yep. we get a new coach and we get a new quarterback. And uh, also, cause this isn't, I, I, cause this isn't uh, Joe Douglas's quarterback, by the way. I'm not going to argue that he had a ton of weapons to go to today. Look, earned it on the fumble. They didn't go to him a lot. They went to him. I think, I think he had three or four catches in that last window dressing drive. Yeah. He had, he had yeah, six. Yeah. He had six for the game, right? Crowder had seven catches for 115. 69 of them came on the touchdown, which means he had six catches for 46 yards. But that's the kind of game. He has. Other than that, Le'Veon had that one big play. Perriman, three catches, 17 yards. The running attack. Gore, six for 24. Bell, six for 14. Adams, two for eight. I mean, just ugliness. And Josh Josh Allen, 57 yards on 14 carries. And that doesn't even remotely that tell doesn't even, it's, it's, it, it, 57 yards. It felt like he had 150 yards on the Only, ground. I know that. 57, 14. Yeah. Well, look. For see, 46. 312 yards and two touchdowns. Yeah, the, his the, career high in passing yards. The the, the thing about um, uh, as far as I'm concerned with don't with with weapons and stuff. See, the reason why I'm willing to be like, hey, it doesn't matter about the weapons, is because of the way Sam looked early in the game. Because Sam had guys open early in the mm-hmm. game, and guys weren't catch, and, and he wasn't hitting guys. And when he finally got the ball in Crowder's hands, he dropped the ball. And, and I'm not going to, and Crowder usually catches the ball and he made a big play. So I, I'm not going to slam Crowder, but Sam Darnold was in the beginning and the most important part of the game when it mattered the most, he was terrible. And it didn't matter who his weapons were. It didn't matter if he had Antonio Brown in his prime out there. The fact is he wouldn't have hit him anyway because he couldn't hit anybody. Yep. So Look, I, the, the line I thought was okay. I don't think they were great. Um, but they did give him time to throw. And also, honestly, the one thing we talked about, or they talked about Donald a lot, is his ability to move in the pocket, yeah. and slide and create space. Yeah, He did that, yeah. and he still wasn't able to hit guys, even though that they were open. Or B, he needs to, that internal clock was lacking in terms of, okay, one, two, I'm going to go. 
I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to find a lane. I'm going to run. I'm going to gain some positive yardage. And he didn't. And there were lanes there to go. Look, I know he doesn't want to get hit a lot, but go. Take the take what the Slide. defense is giving you and find space and go and gain at least some positive yardage. Yeah, it's like it's like when when he's in the pocket and he gets the protection and he's and he decides he's not going to run. Then what happens is instead of then just okay, now you're in the pocket and you're not going to run, so now you have to take the hit and and be and be cognizant of what's going on and make the throw. What happens is that's when he gets on his back foot. That's when it's like, uh oh, now I'm about to get hit. Now I have to throw on my back foot. That it's 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 he's not acting like a three year veteran quarterback. It's one or the other, dude. Either take off, or when you don't take off, stand in the pocket and still you have to take the hit. You have got to stop throwing off your back foot. I don't get how this guy continues to throw off his back foot at this point in his career. I, I, don't, I don't understand either. it. I don't either. And then the time oh. when Le'Veon Bell fell on that third down play, and it was like, he, and it's funny, again, Lofton, because he's an idiot, or it was, he, it was the play-by-play guy, they go, Bell is check down receiver. Bell was his primary receiver, you freaking idiot. Donald comes out, looks to Bell immediately, Bell slips, and then that's it. Darnold basically, uh-oh, I don't know what to do, and I got to go down. I, I just, you know, uh, look, I, I hope this is this one-week thing. I hope it's about not being able to have enough time to practice with his receivers. Perryman's new. Guy's going down left and right. Uh, that's what we got to hope. Yeah, it's an excuse because Allen incorporated. No, that's what I'm saying. New. We have to hope. He incorporated Zach Moss, who's new. Um, granted, he has Brown back from last year and Cox Knox back from last year um, and Beasley back from last year and Singletary, but he still incorporated two new pieces and didn't seem to have any problem moving them up and down the field against the Jets defense, which was also non-existent for a good part of the game. He's got look, 50. they got two fortunate fumbles, or that score would have been well, thirty four. Uh, that that was forty one seven. No, th- those weren't. Those were good defensive plays. One of so. them was. One of them, the guy just basically got look. He got hit low and he fumbled. He didn't even get touched on the ball. Yeah, but he got hit low. So still got a, th- I mean, it's a bad job by the quarterback. Not not. That's not okay, but that's that's if what we, you have if to. If Darnold had fumbled that, we'd be all over. No, but you have to. But but if you're going to run like that, you're going to have to pay the price. And the Jets forced him at least in those two right. situations to pay the price. And we got the three points also as the official somehow missed the field goal that went inside the upright and called it wide right. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Uh, there were just countless just really bad things that took place in the game. Uh, and, and you take a look at the primary players that have got to be accountable are Darnold on the offense and Quinn and Williams on defense, because let's also keep in mind, Joe Douglas has only had one draft. These are not his players. And maybe he would have drafted Quinn and Williams. I got no idea, but Quinn and Williams isn't his player. Sam Darnold isn't his player. Uh, so there's going to be a situation, and and look, maybe again, this was all part of the reason why he didn't want to go out and spend for a second receiver, and spend for a free agent corner, and spend for or trade for a defensive lineman, and so forth and so on. Uh, Joe Douglas knows that he's got a long contract, and he is in this for the long haul. And if this team has got to be a bad team for the next year or two, and and he can create a Super Bowl championship team three years from now, then that's what he's going to do. So it's going to be a long process with Joe Douglas. So are you saying he's tanking the year? No, I don't say that at all. Uh, Because Sam Darnold is the one that has to be the difference maker. And I just hope that they make the right call with Sam if he doesn't get better. Because in my opinion, as I said this before, this is it for Sam Darnold. I don't think Sam Darnold deserves the Jets to go into this offseason with two first-round draft picks and say – if Darnold doesn't look any better, let's say Darnold just comes back and plays like he did last year, this year, and we get to next to the off season, I think the Jets need to to to, to bring in another quarterback as an insurance they, policy. They may have to. 
Um, not not give right up now. totally on Darnold and say give him one more year, but make sure you're ahead of the curve. Bring the young quarterback in, sit him on the bench, and maybe even pressure Sam Darnold to know that, hey, if you don't get better, man, and this guy's coming in, and we'll get rid of you, but if you prove yourself, then we could always trade this guy. But I don't want to be left all alone with Sam Darnold in the next couple of years, and then that means we have to draft a quarterback, and then that means we have to p- w- w- develop him for two more years. So it, it, it was look. I will give though. I mean, looking at the numbers, May besides the error he made, actually, actually had a pretty decent game, and you can see who? that Williams is going to use him sort of like Jamal Who's Adams that? did. Marcus May. Oh yeah, Marcus he's, May made a couple of good plays. Yeah, he's he's going to he's going to use May very similar to the way he used Adams, which is what yep. we saw in camp, right? Rushing the passer, um, kind of like a corner in the box at times. He had ten tackles, seven of them solo, two tackles and two tackles for losses, and two pass defenses. So overall, pretty solid game. But the problem is, is is not enough pressure on Allen. And when they did get pressure on Allen. Yeah, what else is new? Not enough pressure on our our, our vaunted 3-4 deep. And, and here we are again. I haven't looked at the snaps. And even though Cashman got hurt, I still saw a lot of Harvey Lange and, uh, and some other linebackers. And I'm going, it, it sure seemed to me they were playing a 3-4 again. Even without Williamson, even without Mosley, even though Greg Williams, most of his career has been a four-three guy, for some strange reason, we're we're playing linebackers like Neville Hewitt and Harvey Lange instead of playing more defensive linemen that seem to have more talent. So I, I just, you know, I, I don't know what that's about. And 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 he deserves to get criticized when he doesn't have a game plan. To at least, yeah, if Josh Allen was throws for 300 yards, but he doesn't run, I'm okay with that. But when you allow Josh Allen to run like that, I'm sorry, but that's that, that's coaching. You got to figure out a way to stop Josh Allen in it. You got two months. And see, we criticize the wide receivers, but not having enough time uh, to not having enough time uh, to play together with the quarterback and a lot of a lot of ins and outs with injuries and situations like that. But we have to feel, we have to say the same thing about the secondary. And if the secondary can't play together, like Desiers was out the whole off season and he was new anyway. And, um, pool had the, uh, dehydration uh, stuff happen to him. And, and then McDougal's new to the team. And May's got a you know a new uh, way that he's being used, so it 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 makes sense just like the offensive line that your secondary is not going to look real good early on in the season. I'm just telling facts. If we're t- I said early on in the season, why do you wait? Wait, wait. you you think the Jets have a really good secondary? Okay, so it's not an excuse, it's a fact. I just blasted Greg Williams. What kind of excuse am I making? I just said Greg Williams. It, I didn't mind if the secondary gave up 300 yards because they're not, they haven't played together for a while, but you can't also allow Josh Allen to, to, to run wild like that. That's coaching. So, so... Th- one part is excusable for me in week one. The other part is inexcusable. And uh, and and for the most part, though, again, it's something that they're going to eventually have to figure out uh, as early as next week or else it's going to get real ugly real soon because they're not supposed to beat the Niners. And then who's after that? The Colts? Yeah, so, and that's still going to be another good team. So, anyway, um... As we said in the beginning, it's week one. It's in Buffalo. These things are going to happen. But the primary thing we talked about when the when the when the when the season began, or the, when we in our preseason show was all this year was about was Gase and Darnold. That's it. That's all it was about. And so far from Sam Darnold in week one, we couldn't have seen a worse demonstration of what this season hopefully will not look like the rest of the way or else it's going to be a long season. And by the way, those calls were also bad. The ones that, 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 that not only were those, remember when the, um, uh, the two pass plays, when, 
uh, first of all, you had the one in the second half when Harrison was called for pass interference on third down. That was not pass interference. Uh, and that was on third down. That kept that drive alive. And then in the first half, uh, there was, let's see, who was the one? Oh, Desir. When he got called for that 35-yard pass interference penalty, which was not pass interference when the guy came back from the ball, but it wasn't like Desir, like, you know, did anything. Like, we've seen a lot worse pass interference when guys come back from the ball. That was another, that was a bailout call by the refs on that one, too. So when you have big plays like that go against you and your quarterback stinks for most of the, for most part, and you're committing penalties and you're dropping passes and, and your number one running back pulls a hamstring and, and you got to rely on Frank Gore because P Ryan's also out from an injury and Mims is out from an injury. Then is it really a big surprise when you mix all of that together that we got the result that we got? And even though it was still 21, 10 until Herndon fumbled the game away. So anyway, you still there? Because I know your video is gone, been been down. All right. No, it's down. So um so now next week oh, by the way, the, the, the one play that Langy made in the end zone was a nice play, the pass defense on third down, and then Bass missed his second field goal. So at least so Langy made one play in the game. And there were a few plays that were made for the most part, but just not enough. Um, all right, San Francisco, and you're not available, right, next week? Okay, so and that, is that an early game or a late game? I'm trying to remember. I know one of these games early in the season is late. Maybe the Colt game. But I'm, I know that one of them is, uh, is late. Uh, but anyway... We'll be here again to wrap up next week's game. Now, during the week, uh, a lot's going to be hit and miss depending on whether or not I'm going to get somebody on. Like I was able to get Ryan on, Ryan Talbot, and interview an analyst that covers the other team and talk about the game. So if we can hook that up, then we'll we'll do that. But if not, then it doesn't always promise that we'll have a Jets FM show during the week. And to tell you the truth, I don't even know why I would have a Jets FM show on this week. That's for sure. Because after this show, I just don't, I don't, I don't even, you know, of course, a lot's going to depend too. We know what the, we know what the, the writers are all going to say. Uh, Cause we, yeah, we were, we were just harsh on them and I could just imagine how the writers are going to be. So, all right. We were, they were, were harsh to be harsh. So. Yeah, we uh, we actually just proved once again that if uh, if the Jets deserve uh, to get trashed, then we're going to trash them. But we're not going to trash them just to trash them like the writers normally do. Okay, so that's going to wrap it up for week one of Jets FM on EOFN. Next uh, Sunday, I will be solo. And, uh, and then after that, you'll be back to return for the Colt game, correct? Yeah, actually, I have the schedule right here. Let's see. Where is my schedule? Here it is. I have it right here. And and in the division, uh, the Patriots beat the Dolphins. Uh, and that it was the it was a, a, one of those bad Ryan Fitzpatrick days. I'll tell you right now, if Ryan Fitzpatrick had a good Ryan Fitzpatrick day, the Dolphins might have beat them. And he was terrible. Yeah, he didn't do much. No, that's what I'm saying. Fitzpatrick was awful. It's one of those games where a two is going to wind up getting in there a lot faster if Ryan Fitzpatrick keeps playing like that for the next week or two. Uh, Jets and Colts are the four o'clock game in a few weeks. And uh, let's see. Oh, next week is the week that you can do the show, but you wouldn't be able to do the show until later in the evening. So you will be on the air with me. Now, later in the evening, that's sundown, right? All right, so we'll probably do that. So we'll we'll do the Jets FM show after the seven o'clock games around eight o'clock, and uh, and then you'll be off for the Colt game, which is the four o'clock game, and then pretty much uh, you're available most of the rest of the season, give or take maybe a, a week or two in there in there in the schedule. But uh, all right, sounds good. So next week uh, we'll have our Jets FM show on right around eight o'clock. That'll give me a, probably a good four hours to cool off after after the 49er game. Uh, probably not. 
All right, Jan. So uh, that went well. Uh, I'll talk to you uh, again uh, uh, next uh, next Sunday. And everything else uh, going okay, Jan? Uh, how's hockey? Yeah, maybe Vegas can turn the table and and do it. We're be- we're down three to one. I think Vancouver. I think Vancouver has something to do with that. Yep. Yeah, it's not like it's uh, it's not like these games are five four. It's like Vegas just can't muster any offense, which just shows you if they can't muster offense against Dallas in this entire series, then they're worn out. I mean, they just they got nothing in the tank right now. So, uh, but whatever, we'll see. Again, they're down three one. Maybe they could turn the script, and uh, hopefully, the Islanders can make a series of Tampa Bay. Uh, but uh, anyway, that's that's uh, that's the world of hockey in Edmonton, Canada. Uh, and I have no idea what's going on in baseball or the NBA. Just I, I just I don't care much. I know you care about your Mets. So are you do you really pay attention to baseball right now? Okay, you got your fantasy leagues. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't. I got my championship last year in baseball. And I just, I, I can't watch this baseball. I just can't. It's just, it's, see, at least the basketball and hockey, you had your whole season. But the baseball thing to me is a joke because it's not going to, you know, it's just, it's not comparable. You lose 100 games and I'm sorry. It's just, uh, it's, it's, it's a title into itself. The hockey and basketball ones, I'm willing to give, give the teams a lot more credit than the baseball. But, What are they in? Final four? Quarterfinals still? Every team's in the semis except Clippers? Okay. Okay. Oh, wow. The Rockets lost in the playoffs again. So James Harden probably didn't come through in the playoffs again then, huh? That's an ongoing record with him. Three three, okay. So the winner of that one takes on the Lakers in the semis, or the yeah the semifinals. Sure. Heat, heat. Well, why Boston? Why why not Boston? But Heat are the that's the crazy one, right? Yeah. Well, they had the superstar as well. Milwaukee had the superstar. I think they were too. I think they were a little bit too concerned with uh, politics, though. But uh, yeah, uh, Toronto, they lost their star player. I mean, that's going to happen. That, that's not a big surprise, right? Yeah. Who's the Bucks coach? Is he in trouble now? All right, Jan, I appreciate it as always. Uh, We'll uh, talk more Jets FM, uh, San Francisco Jets action uh, on on Sunday again, right around 8 o'clock, and then we should be able to post it uh, probably about an hour later for everybody to tune into. And then we'll have uh, this week, uh, I have a whole bunch of shows tomorrow. I'll be interviewing. uh, I got a couple of uh, analysts on to talk football at 6.30 regarding this weekend. And I have Ryan Dunleavy to talk about the weekend and all of our other shows, including our our weekly Patriot show. Do you believe that? I have a weekly Patriot show, by the way. See, at least I got a show I could I could talk about, you know, team winning. So, yeah. I'm, I'm an unbiased. I'm an unbiased host. I'm an unbiased host. That's it. But my boy Tom Brady's gone. My Michigan guy is gone. So it's. Not a good year for me to be doing a Patriot show. But Evan Lazar does a great job covering the Patriots. That's why we did the show. And it's all about the Patriots. And it's nothing to do with me venting or being a, a homer in any way, shape, or form. Uh, so anyway, Jan, appreciate it. We'll talk to you next Sunday.